The Drunk Man, Martingale Approach A drunk man is at the 17th meter of a 100 meter long bridge. He has a 50% probability of staggering forward or backward 1 meter each step. What is the probability that he will make it to the end of the bridge, namely the 100th meter, before the beginning, namely the 0th meter? What is the expected number of steps he takes to reach either the beginning or the end of the bridge? Alright, so this is another one-dimensional random walk with two boundary conditions. In fact, this problem is a special case of the gambler's ruin problem, which was discussed before in this channel. There, we had a general case for the step probabilities P and Q being not equal to one half. Here, it is symmetric with P is equal to Q equal to 1 over 2. In this case, we can use a so-called martingale approach. So let me give a very brief introduction to martingales. Martingales are stochastic processes with some unique properties. To understand it, let's think of random walks for now. Let the position of a random walk at step n be zn. Then it's going to be the sum of xi from i is equal to 1 to n where xi is the taken step size at step i. Now, for a stochastic process to be a martingale, it has to meet the below two conditions. One, the expected absolute value of zn should be less than infinity for all possible values of n. Basically, what this condition tells us is that the process has to have a well-defined expectation of absolute zn. We need this for the second condition because if such a finite expectation does not exist, then that second condition would not make sense. Okay, so the second condition tells us that the expected value of z n plus 1, namely the next step value of z n, given that the current value of z n is some known z n, the previous step value z n minus 1 is some z n minus 1, etc., and the first z1 is some known z1 is equal to the current known value zn. In other words, if we know the history of the stochastic process until the current step n, then what is the expected value of the next position zn plus 1? This condition tells us that it should be the current value of zn. Namely, given that we know the current position, we expect that the next step's value is going to be the same current value. Actually, this can be extended to the later steps as well. Since zn plus 1 is expected to have zn, and applying this condition again for zn plus 2 should give the expected value of zn as well for that next step. Therefore, in general, we say that the expected value for some step m, where m is larger than n, Given the current value of zn in the previous history should be equal to simply zn. At first glance, it might seem like this is just a Markov process. Remember that in Markov process, the next step's value does not depend on the history, but only in the current value. But I should warn you that in general, a martingale process is not the same thing as a Markov process. A process might be both Markov and Martingale, but one does not imply the other in general. For example, simple random walks are Markov. Now, think of simple random walk with a drift, namely asymmetric right and left step chances. Therefore, given that we know the current value of that walker, the expected value in the future is not going to be the current one due to the drift tendency. So that's why this process is not going to be a martingale. This goes to show that martingale and Markov do not mean the same thing in general. Alright, so what are some martingale processes? Well, a symmetric random walk with equal right and left step chances is a martingale. Let's show that that is indeed the case. Say that Sn is the position of the walker, which is going to be the sum of xi, like previously. Then, the next step's value, Sn plus 1, is going to be either Sn plus 1 or Sn minus 1 with equal probabilities. 
If we take the expectation of Sn plus 1, we get the following. Which is equal to Sn. So the expected value of Sn plus 1, given that we know that it is currently at Sn, is equal to the current value Sn. And this is exactly what we wrote as the second condition for martingales. So we can say that a symmetric random walk is a martingale. There is another martingale process in the framework of symmetric random walks. And it's the process of Sn squared minus n, where n is the step number. It turns out that this is a useful martingale for many problems. Let's again show that this is a martingale. Once again, we look at the expected value of the next step in the process, like in the previous case. After some simplifications, we see that it is again equal to Sn squared minus n, namely the current value. Therefore, we can again say that Sn squared minus n is a martingale. Alright, now let's apply this knowledge to solve the given drunk man problem. Let this line indicate the bridge where this left red dot is the start and the right red dot is the end. The man starts at the 17th meter, but let me shift my axis such that his starting position is zero. Also, let's keep things general such that the start of the bridge is at negative A and the end is at B. At each step, the man takes steps with P is equal to Q equal to 1 over 2, so this is a symmetric random walk, which is a martingale. Let's denote the walker's position as Sn, which is the sum of xi from i is equal to 1 to n. In addition to Sn, as we saw, Sn squared minus n is also a martingale in this setup. Now, let me take the expected value of Sm, where this Sm represents the terminal values at the edges of the bridge. Given that we start at the Sn is equal to 0, which is the current value, we can expect this expectation to be 0 as well, due to being a martingale. Now, let me denote the probability that the random walk ends at negative a to be pa and at b to be pb. So, this equation can then also be written as the expected value of sm, namely pa multiplied by negative a plus pb multiplied by b. Now, pa must be equal to 1 minus pb since the random walk must end at either negative a or b, and nowhere else. Substituting this into pa gives negative a plus pb multiplied by a plus pb multiplied by b, which is again equal to 0. From here, we find that pb is equal to a divided by a plus b. And plugging in the numbers, we get 17% probability for the walk to end at the end of the bridge before reaching the start. Also, from here, pa is then b divided by a plus b. Note that the index m, namely the terminal step number, is different for when s is equal to a and s is equal to b in general. The above equation doesn't care about this though, as we are simply writing the expected value of the terminal distances. Alright, now how do we find the expected number of steps until termination? It turns out that this Sn squared minus n martingale is useful here, as you can guess from the existence of explicit n in here. Let's again write the expected terminal values for this process. We are given that the initial Sn squared and the initial step number are both 0, so this expectation must be equal to 0 due to being a martingale. But we can also write the expectation of the terminal values explicitly. First, use the linearity of expectation. Then substitute the PA and PB from the above.
and this gives the expected number of steps at the termination, either start or end, to be A times B. Plugging in the numbers, we get 4,441. Unlike in the gambler's ruin problem, here the left and the right step chances are exactly 1 over 2, which allows us to use the martingale approach. You see that by doing so, we can obtain the answer much more easily and quickly.